like an ocean I've been playing on the shore Now I'm diving in because I want to know you more You are like a mountain I've been camping at the base Now I'm heading to the top I want to see your face I want more Give me more comprehend why you would desire to know me as a friend you've been waiting for me I've been wasting time now I'm running to you my arms are open wide I want more give me more together at St. George's United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Blair, and I'm so excited that you are here with us. And what makes me so excited is today is Pentecost Sunday, the birthday of the church, and we're going to get to that in a little bit. But first of all, thank you for joining us. Make sure you grab yourself a cup of coffee, settle in as we come together to worship the Lord today. And if you would please join me in a time of prayer. God of love and mercy, you've given us stewardship to care for this wonderful planet and to care for our neighbors. You have been blessed, we have been blessed with a variety of gifts and talents, and you call us to use them to help others. Open our hearts today to ministry of peace and justice. Embold us to be part of the great cloud of witnesses who were unafraid to be your disciples. We thank you for the so many that you have, gifts that you have provided us. And Lord, we lift up the many in our church and in our family and in our lives who have gone before us braving the difficulties of this present life. We name them in our hearts to you and we're grateful for their example. Lord, we also name in our hearts those who are ill and who mourn and who feel the loss of being alone, those who are part of our culture of oppression and indignity. Help us to be those people who, by example, will break those chains of poverty and bust the doors that imprison their spirits. Be with this church that it may be a true witness to Jesus Christ and all 
what all that we do in your name and in your ministry. Amen. Well, this morning we have special music by Mark and Eric, and with um, it being Pentecost and one of the most uh, wonderful scriptures that we have that we celebrate and maybe most known where it talks about the tongues of fire and how that came down and how one day that we are going to fly away and and go to be with the Lord in and our love and our example that we have shown here on earth will speak volumes to those that we leave behind. But it will be the glory. And so this morning we're going to listen to I Fly Away by Mark and Eric. I hope you enjoyed that. And today, like I said, is Pentecost Sunday. And this morning, our scripture reading comes from Acts chapter 2. And the whole Pentecost experience uh, starts at verse 1 and travels through the majority of the chapter. But I'm just going to read the first eight verses this morning. And the first eight verses says this. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a blowing and violent wind came from the heavens and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under the heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in their own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Gentiles? Then how is it that each of all of us hear them in their own native tongue? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, today is the birthday of the church, and it can't be a party without a little bit of shenanigans and a 
because today is, like I said, Pentecost Sunday, where we celebrate the birthday of the church. And if it wasn't so early in the morning, I probably would have some cake here with me. Now, here's the thing about Pentecost Sunday. It's the day that we celebrate the birth of the church. And when we celebrate the birth of the church in this first couple of chapters that we read, I'm sorry, verses that we read, we hear about how they were able to hear each other in their own language. They're able to hear each other in their own language. And that's the thing is, what is the language of God? The language of God is love, but so many times things get mixed up in the language. So many times things come together in a way that are misunderstood. For example, if I were to say pop, what would you think of? Some of you may think of soda. The first time I heard pop, I was like, what in the world is that? I didn't realize that it was soda. Now I know. Uh, I like to have a little bit of fun with my Siri on my iPhone. So I have the Australian and British one. I forget which one. It's one of those. But anyway, so when I come to a circle, it says enter the roundabout. And when I was growing up, my sister was in course, and in course, uh, there was a group of uh, a choir from England that came together and to, for a U.S. tour, and they were hosted at uh, our school, and so my sister took in two girls to stay at our home while they were there with us. And so it was interesting to hear, you know, when I hear the word boot, I think of boots that I wear on my feet not the trunk of the car. Or when I think of a trolley, I think of something to ride on, not what I push around the grocery store. And so there can be these different language barriers. Even like in our world, when if we go down south, you know, the farther down south we go, if we throw the word scrapple around, they will look at us like, what are you talking about? Because that's something that familiar in our culture, in our area. And so here they are gathered on the day of Pentecost, waiting in anticipation for what Jesus said, that he was going to send this helper. And in this time of Pentecost, we see that Jesus is gone up back into heaven and they are waiting. And then there's this violent wind that comes down, these flaming tongues of fire and this language barrier that used to be there has been conquered and everyone can hear each other. And when I think about this, we all speak the same language or we have the ability to speak the same language if we choose to. And I'm not talking about learning Spanish or going and getting Rosetta Stone and learning uh, French or Dutch or German, but what I'm talking about is the language of God. We all have the ability to speak the language of God if we choose to use it. There's a thing about President Jimmy Carter. During his uh, presidency, he took a state visit to Poland during the Cold War, and he wanted to say something to the people in their language to relate, to show the love that he had for them. And this is what he said, I have a lustful desire in my heart for the Polish people. What he meant to say was that he had a great love for the Polish people. The issue was the interpreter that he used did not know a lot about Polish language. He knew a lot about 19th century and Russian language, but not Polish language. So there was this barrier and things got lost in interpretation. And when I think about our world today and the ability that we have to communicate to people all across the world, that you can turn on your television right now, turn on your computer, your iPad, your phone, and find any Christian preacher to listen to 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And, you know, when things, we don't know the answer, what do we do? We say Google it or we go to Google. I like to call Google uncle. I call him Uncle Google because he reminds me of an uncle that I had that just had an answer for everything. And so Uncle Google, who I go to quite often, and so we have this ability to have this technology and sometimes we use it effectively and sometimes we don't. And in this age where people are able to hear the gospel in many different forms and in many different formats, I mean, I have an iPhone app that I can pull 
pick up a scripture and I can press play in several hundred different languages. And it is so fun to just sit in peace and quiet somewhere and pull up Dutch of a Bible verse or to pull up um, Romanian and just to listen to that verse in that different language, realizing that there are many different tongues all around the world, but we speak we may speak different languages that we can't understand exactly what each other's saying, but we serve the same mighty God. And But there's this conflict, is if we have all this ability to communicate, then why is there such a lack of people's ability to hear the Word of God? And I think that comes down to we are speaking the wrong language sometimes. Sometimes we need to speak the language of God. See, I know people that know a lot about God. Some of them know and can quote scripture better than I can, and I'm a pastor. But the thing is, they don't have a relationship. There's this communication barrier between them and God. And so this morning, I want to challenge us to speak the language of God. And you may be thinking, Blair, what is the language of God? And the language of God is love, L-O-V-E. Love is the language of God. God. But here's the thing is so many times we have lost focus on what that means because other things have become more important in our lives than speaking the language of God. Rick Warren wrote um, this scripture. All right, he, Rick Warren, pastor and author, wrote this. He said, for some time now, the hands and feet of the body of Christ have been amputated and we've been pretty much reduced to a big mouth. Think about that. How much has the church been a lot of praying, but not a lot of doing? A lot of hearing what's going on, wishing and hoping instead of being active or proactive. And that's what we're called to do. We're called to be active, to be proactive in seeking to speak the language of love. Growing up, there's this neighbor that we had, and he would not talk to us that often. Um, and when he did, it was just a casual hi. And like, my parents were always nice to them. And I asked, you know, why? And they said, because that's a nice thing to do. And the neighborly thing to do. But as I got older and became a believer in Jesus Christ, I realized that it was not just the neighborly thing to do, but it is the Christian thing to do. That even though despite um, there was no return, no reciprocation to the hi or the hello or the niceness. It was the fact that it continued. It was the fact that it went on. And I want to challenge us that it is time to reattach the limbs and let the church be the church in the 21st century. And that's what I feel like we are called to do. We are becoming a new church throughout the situation that we find ourselves in. We are becoming new beings to a place where we can't go back to what is normal. It's going to be a new normal, and it's going to be better than we were before. You know, it's that saying, I thank God I'm not where I am, but I'm not where I'm supposed to be, but I thank God I'm not where I was. And that's what we're doing is every day we are called to speak the language of love and do it the best we can. By showing the grace of God and the grace of mercy to all. Because here's the thing. I love peanut cartoons and I love Charlie Brown. And one of the things in one of the cartoons, we have Charlie Brown. And he's talking to Lucy and he's, he opens up. He's becoming vulnerable to Lucy. And he was like, I got something, you know, that I want to say. And every night he go. there's times that he goes out on this rock and he lays his head and he and he stares up at the sky, and this is what he wonders. He says, you know, and he wants to make sure that Lucy's not going to laugh at him, which after everything that Lucy's done to Charlie Brown, why would he keep, like, going to her? But anyway, that's that's the whole comedic thing of it, I guess. But Charlie Brown shares something very special to him, very close to the heart, very vulnerable, staying. He says, sometimes I lay awake at night listening for a voice that will cry, we love you, Charlie Brown. We love you, Charlie. Mm. There's a lot of people in our world. There may be people in our congregation. It may be you right now watching this sermon thinking, 
I wish there was someone that says, I love you so and so. I want to tell you first up right now, St. George the United Methodist Church is a place where we love you. And I love you. And we are a big dysfunctional family. Um, but we love each other despite our flaws. And that's what we're called to do. We're a church that speaks the, the um, language of love. And I want to encourage you, church, to continue to speak the language of love. Instead of trying to talk to people into thinking as we do, perhaps our privilege is simply to love people with the love of Christ. And that's what we're called to do. Is, you know, so many times we want people to simulate, act like us, talk like us, look like us. I mean, you know, with this quarantine, I haven't got a haircut in months. And I'm like looking at the things like maybe I can grow it out to look like a BG or something. But the thing is this, it's not about how people look. It's not about what people do, but it's how we love them. How we show them the grace of God through the love. And we are called to be that hands and feet. Um, you know, Billy Graham, his whole goal, his whole purpose was to win a generation for Jesus. And to make a difference in the world. And a difference has been made through his ministry. And we are called to carry on the ministry of Jesus. And continue to that mission of being a bridge of hope to the community. And to show that love because we are commanded to love each other as ourselves. You know, one person who was quoted saying, it's easy to love everyone around me. It's just hard to love my neighbor. And that's the truth. It is hard to love our neighbor. People get on our nerves. People just scratch us or poke us the wrong way. You know, I've got a daughter and I know sometimes she tries to push my buttons and that's just the way of life. But in, at the end of the day, no matter how hard she pushes my buttons, no matter how crazy I get or she causes me to become, at the end of the day, I still love her. I still pray with her at night. And that's what we're called to do. We're called to love people regardless. And we're called to show that great love. And that's what's the whole purpose of the day of Pentecost is the fact that the disciples were going around with Jesus, learning and preparing for this day. And now they have been equipped with the tool to use to go carry out the mission that they have been equipping for. And that's what we're called to do. If we believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have the Holy Spirit within us. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave lives within us. And with great power comes great responsibility. That's right. And that's the thing is sometimes we are afraid of what God might use us to do, where God might take us. But whatever that road is, whatever that journey is, we should not do it in fear, but we should do it in love for one another, knowing that God has given you gifts, talents, and abilities to use to further the kingdom of God through speaking the language of love. Jesus, through his example, showed the great love of Christ to everyone, showed his great love to everyone of the Father. And through that, you know, he changed the world. People were attracted to him. People wanted to get involved, and that's what we're called to do. We're called to love God. We're called to love Jesus. We're called to love our neighbor as ourselves. And that's where it begins is with ourselves, is getting rid of that self-doubt and realizing that you have the ability to speak the language of love that God has given you. That you don't need the Rosetta Stone, that you don't need some type of special class. It's the fact that you have been given the ability through the Holy Spirit. And through that, we see in the rest of the story of Pentecost, and many of you may know it, but thousands came to know Christ that day. It's because of speaking the language. It's because of knowing the language of love. And that's what I challenge you to do today. To love unconditionally. Exhibit mercy rather than judgment or humility rather than superiority. Compassion rather than the strict letter of the law. We are speaking, you know, we are called to speak that language of God each and every day. So, I pray that as we go forth, that we become a stronger church, that we become a people that love each other in a mighty way. And through that, people will know just how much God loves them. You know, there's a Christian mission, there's a journalist that followed this Christian missionary around and 
the journalist said in his little write-up, he says, if I was with that missionary any longer, I probably would have became a Christian. And he didn't even speak a word about God to me. It was through his actions, through his love, the way he conducted himself, that made that journalist say that statement. So many times we think we don't know the words to say, but the Holy Spirit will give them if he calls us to use them. But what God calls us to do is to speak the language of love, to love people the way we are able to love them. We love people each and every different. For me, my love language is um, acts of service. I feel really love when people do stuff for me. And that's how I show that as well. Like I show people I love them by doing things. I'm a doer. And we all have this different love language. And we're called to speak those love languages in a way that reaches people so that they see Christ in us. And that they want to say, hey, what's, got, what's different about that? So may you go forth knowing that God loves you. May you go forth knowing that I love you. And that St. George's, we love each other the best we can, even though it may be dysfunctional sometimes. May we know, take what we know and put it into practice. May we take what we know and put it into practice and show people the genuine language of God, which is love. Would you please pray with me? Lord God, I thank you for this day. Lord, I pray for those that may not be feeling loved, that may be feeling lost and lonely. May they know that there is a church, there is people here to, uh, to, to help them each and every day. Lord, may we walk with you each and every day. May we speak that language of love that you've given us to everyone each and every day. And Lord, may we not be just mouths. May we continue to be the hands and feet that you've called us to be, despite the situations that are ahead of us. And Lord, if there's anyone listening that's saying, hey, I just, I need to feel that love. Help them know that it's as easy as saying, Lord, I am a sinner. I need you in my life. Please forgive me and help me to Move forward. We pray all this in your son's name. Amen. Got a couple of announcements. Um, first of all, next Sunday, I will not be on the screen. It will be our bishop and the cabinet. They have recorded a service for uh, clergy to show in place of them doing it, and uh, I'm going to take a little break. This is a lot of stuff going on, and sit back and relax and get fed from the bishop and her leadership team. The second thing is, if you have any prayer concerns, or if you have want to connect with us, um, or maybe you ask Jesus into your life, I ask that you fill out the little comment cards that with the links that are either above or below, depending on what platform you're uh, watching on. And then, um, and next week too, I'm sorry, I forgot. Next week is also the first uh, Sunday of the month. The bishop has given us permission to do communion online. So part of the service online next Sunday will uh, include communion. So please go ahead and prepare to have bread, juice, or whatever you have uh, to be symbols of the grace and mercy that God has bestowed upon us. And then lastly, um, if you'd like to support the ministry of our church, um, we are doing some great things with upgrading, um, with reaching out to people and upgrading the spirit that is so much down so many times. We're just lifting that up by upgrading it, by helping people, by giving out food, by supporting the food pantry, by uh, helping a mother in transition during this uh, time of stay-at-home orders. There's, um, you know, through the financial giving, we bought some new equipment to help and better, better what we do. So it's your support that keeps us going. So if you're able to give, I know each of us are in different situations at this time, but there's three different ways that you can 
give right there on the screen um, to the ministry of our church. With that, I thank you for watching. Remember to celebrate the birth of the church today, uh, whether it's a donut, whether it's a piece of cake, piece of chocolate, whatever it may be, but uh, to celebrate and to be the voice of God by speaking the language of love to everyone. Remember, I love you. The best is yet to come. Take care. See you in a few weeks.